Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Ooh-wee. Love that sweet music. That's, and for those that are just watching this for the first time, ooh, let's turn that bad boy on, right? Make sure that we are rocking and rolling. This is Winning Cures Everything. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. <laughs> Hold on, I got it. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. All right. The show brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They've got six incredible sports books. You can go online and find out more about them over at tunicatravel.com. We would highly recommend that you do so. They've got some incredible things going on down there. So go over to tunicatravel.com. Find out for yourself exactly how wonderful it is. You can follow me on Twitter at GaryWCE. You can follow me at Chris B. Giannini. You can find everything you need to about the show over at winningcureseverything.com. Our YouTube, the podcasts, our previews, our picks, our, just everything is right there. Our Facebook, all that wonderful stuff. Uh, leave us a nice review on Apple Podcasts. We would appreciate that. Hit that subscribe button, then unclick it and unsubscribe, and then subscribe again. And that because it helps the numbers somehow, some way, whatever this Apple algorithm is, let's say algorithm, yeah, whatever it is, it helps those numbers. So leave a nice review, share the show out, tell your buddies about it, hit subscribe on YouTube if you would so kindly, leave us some comments, tell us what we got wrong, what we got right, we would appreciate all of that. Chris, you ready to fire into the ACC Coastal? I think so. You think so? I think so. Are we going to be way off on some of these? Probably. Okay. Okay. I'm good with that. Sometimes we do that. Um, you're, you're far more informed on some of these teams than I am. My wife would agree because I spend hours and hours on this. And it's re- because I've done it for 130 teams now. Like, this is absurd. I probably, like, this is not my job. I would like for it to be my job. I would love for it to be my job. Which is why I put job. in the work. That's I was just about to say. Yeah. But uh, but it's not my job currently, and my wife reminds me of that religiously, and that's okay. It, I understand where she's coming from. We got a one year old at the house. She's got two jobs. I got this and my regular job, and the one year old, and we got fam. We got all this stuff. And yet, football is that important to me. Football's been here for me my whole life. My whole life. Correct. And you know what I'm talking about. I know, I mean, listen, just, I, I got four jobs. Just is what it is. Yeah, you do. You got a whole lot of jobs. We'll talk more about those as the season goes along. <laughs> but either way, let's start this thing off. The Duke Blue Devils. The Dukies? Is that what they call them? Is that, I, I guess that's more of a basketball thing, right? I guess. I mean, th- I'm this, sure you can call them that in both sports. I guess so. Eight and five last year, three and five in conference. They returned five starters on offense, nine on defense. Experience returning, they got uh, it's number 63 in the country, number eight in the conference. They're over under. It's five and a half. The over, the juice on it, minus 150. The under, plus 130. So Vegas thinks they're more likely to hit six wins than five. David Cutcliffe. We love David Cutcliffe. We do like David Cutcliffe. 67 and 72 in 11 years, which is it's crazy to think that he's been there for that long. Correct. Know? Um, he always finds a way to coach up teams that don't look that good on paper. And this one definitely does not look that good on paper. Quarterback Quentin Harris, fifth-year senior. He replaces Daniel Jones. He was 2-0 and as a starter in relief duty. Uh, but no proven wideouts. They're going to lean more on the run than usual. Four out of five offensive linemen are back. they got two junior running backs. Uh, that's They're going to lean on the run a lot. Right. Uh, at least the quarterback has some experience, but they went from number 21 total defense in number uh, in 2017 to number 77 in 2018. That was after losing Jim Knowles to Oklahoma State. Now they lose three out of their four leading tacklers. Uh, defensive end Chris Rumpf was a freshman All-American last year. They're going to lean heavily on him. Uh, the schedule is not kind whatsoever. And I, I always hate to pick this team to not make a bowl game, but I have them five and seven. So I've got them losing to Alabama in the, the opening week in Atlanta. Then two straight wins over North Carolina A&T and at Middle Tennessee State. A loss at Virginia Tech, a win over Pitt, a win over Georgia Tech at home, a loss at Virginia, a win at North Carolina, and then I've got them losing the last four games. Notre Dame, Syracuse, at Wake Forest, and Miami. 
we have the exact same game, the exact same record, five and seven. And would it surprise me if they found a way to win at home against Syracuse or Miami or win at Wake Forest? No, it would not surprise me. I, this David Cook always finds a way to make a bowl game, but that's right. But he but also, it also wouldn't surprise me if they lost that North Carolina game, right? Or if they lost the game at you know home to Pitt. Yeah, I mean it's like I mean it. There's there's or even at Middle Tennessee State. Like I know Middle Tennessee State like they don't return hardly anything, but like that would that's a road me. game. Uh, yeah, but that would surprise me. Uh, you know, all I'm saying, David Cook no is he's sixty seven and seventy two, yeah. right? Like. That is an overall losing record. But what he has done here has been almost miraculous. He has made this team a very competitive team in this league. Uh, and the ACC was not always as weak as it appears, you know, this year or in the past couple of years. Um, but, man, I just I don't see how this team this season can get to a bowl game. Yeah, Daniel Jones did go number Six overall. Six overall. We don't, we don't think like, he's supposed to. But, but but like he was still projected to be a first round quarterback, even if it wasn't that early. Like everyone thought he belongs in the NFL, right? Yeah. You just don't lose that and move on, I don't think. Maybe. God, I mean, it's he's become such a punchline. It's hard to say that and think, well, yeah, but not like he was great. He was pretty he, good. He was good. And and don't I mean Look, I, you can't underestimate Quentin Harris too much. 2-0 and as a starter in relief duty, and he's beaten some pretty good teams. So, I mean, I, yes, I could see them going 6-6 six and six and making a bowl game, but I, I don't see them being really any better than that. Like, do you agree? Yeah, oh, their ceiling would be 6-6. Six and six. Yeah. Like that, it would shock me if they went 6-7-5. and 7-5, seven seven and five. Five. Yeah. Five, I, I think, is, is strong, strong. Uh, yes, that would be completely proving everybody wrong. That's um, right. And don't underestimate David Cutcliffe. Right? Correct. Like he, he now, could if anybody that. could take a new quarterback and coach him up, I mean, well, especially knows, a senior quarterback. Yeah, this guy knows quarterbacks. So yeah. yeah, I mean, so it wouldn't. I, I don't know. It, I got it seven, and f- five and seven, and and I, I like I said, if they finish six and six, it wouldn't shock me. Finish four and eight, it wouldn't shock me. No, I so, I agree. I agree. Uh, next. The Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Seven and six last year, five and three in the conference. I don't think any of that necessarily matters. Nope. Returning starters, they got four on offense, three on defense. Nationally, they returned the number 122 most experienced, which is not good. They are dead last in the conference. Jeff Collins, 15 and 10 in two years at Temple, but remember he was at Mississippi State, Florida before that. Uh, he is known for his defenses. It, he has a legit year zero. Like, That's there right. are no expectations this year. They're having to restructure from the triple option that Paul Johnson built, which is, it's almost impossible to discuss what the offense is going to be like in year one. That's right. Uh, the offensive line has to change blocking schemes. Running backs are moving to wide receiver. The quarterbacks are actually going to throw the ball now. Uh, I mean, their quarterback last year threw the ball 15 times. Like, what are we talking about? That you happens know? in a quarter now. Yeah, uh, Collins' defense is known for third down mayhem. They're still going to be able to do that, but they've only got three starters back, and the front seven has very little actual in-game experience, which could be a good thing. Like, he can build them from from what he wants to be. Now, he's from the Atlanta area. They're going to need to like, be, build depth, though. That's the biggest thing with this defense. The way he does such an attacking defense, you're going to have to have depth because I think you're going to be on the field a lot. Yes, yes. Uh, but I also think that they're going to rotate a lot. Like, they're, he's going to get a lot of guys a lot of experience. Which is he's not going to be, to. It's not going to be good for the record this That's year. That's right. But it will be good for the, the When those haul. guys become juniors and seniors, it, yeah. it could bode very well. And on, on top of that, like, the schedule is pretty ridiculous yep. for a team that is changing philosophy. It's pretty ridiculous for any team, really. But a team that's trying to change philosophies right now, like, that is... This one is way far out there. The over under is four. The over is plus one forty. The under is one sixty or minus one sixty. Uh, I've got them dead on that, and I I wonder, like maybe I'm putting a little bit too much stock into Jeff Collins and what he's the the excitement that he's building around the program, because I've got them beating UCF, the Citadel, North Carolina, and Pitt. Now all home games, but. 
I, you've kind of leaned on that a lot. You I mean you've had this conversation sometimes on camera, a little bit more off camera. Where the the home, home field advantage home maybe field is, ma- is, is, yeah. is I mean it matters, but across college football, home teams are going to lose a lot. Like it's just not we're at yeah. home. We're going to chalk up wins. I got them two and ten. And I, I got them two and ten because I think this is going to be year zero. Yeah. I think this is going to be an overhaul. Trent, the fact that he's a defensive guy, I think could get him to three and nine, because if they've got enough guys on the field and they can continue to run the ball, because you're right, being a triple option team means they should still have athletic offensive linemen. But yeah. the problem is, is those guys are usually such good athletes, but not big, strong, moving right. people offensive linemen. You're doing a lot more cutting, pulling, and things of that nature. I, I, will they be able to overpower even some of these other front sevens from schools like Pitt or Wake Forest? I'm not, I'm not talking about can they move Clemson. We know no, the answer to that is no. It's can they Pitt, move Pitt, can they move North Carolina. Can they move North Carolina, know. can they move these these other schools? I think that's going to be hard. Yeah. I think it's going to be really hard. I think non-conference going to Temple is going to be tough. Yeah, because because Temple's gonna come at him for leaving. Oh yeah, I, and, I've got him losing the game at Temple. And, and and South Florida, I I like Strong a lot more than you like Strong. Yeah. I think that's gonna be a hard game. I don't know that South Florida's just gonna mosey on in and take an L. No, no, no. I, I and, agree. And so it just there's not a lot of places where you can say I think they're gonna win this. Four game. four and eight might be a little generous. And two and ten might me. be rough. I mean, we. I mean, you know. we'll, we'll see, right? That's the, right. This is the complete like. It, I would not touch this. Uh, this oh, I don't know. Season win total for anything because it, four, like you could, you could see them getting to four, but they're not going to go over that. And the under, uh, I mean, doesn't pay out well. So I mean, minus one sixty, like it's <laughs> my every almost every division that we've done so far there's been at least one team on there where no matter how much i read about it, it doesn't matter like i yeah. don't know i don't know anything about them or what they're actually going to look like i know the coaches i know like the kind of schemes that they but i don't i don't know what they're going to be like when they actually get on the field yeah this yeah. is that team i got no clue no i'm i'm with you all right let's move on the miami florida hurricanes 7 and 6 in 2018 4 and 4 in conference Four returning starters on offense, six on defense. Experience returning number 83 in the country, number 10 in the conference. Their over-under is eight and a half. To go over, it is plus 100, so it's even odds. To go under, it is minus 120. So it is more likely that they hit eight wins as opposed to going over. Uh, but Vegas sees it very closely. It's, right? Yeah, that's, that's, um, that's a normal bet. That's not too bad. Manny Diaz, former defensive coordinator. Takes over for Mark Richt, who decided rather than fire his son, he would just retire from the game, uh, which is funny because his son lost his job anyway. So it's well, know, yeah. I mean, when that happens, you bring somebody in to fire his son. Mark Richt is a very principled man, and that's right. There are very few of those left in in college football, in football period, really, or like, in any, and just in life. Yeah, or just in life. Uh, so Diaz, he's been the defense coordinator at Mississippi State, Texas, Louisiana Tech. Then he started at Miami in 2016. Uh, this is, I think, is perfect job for him. Perfect Got job. the head coaching job at Temple, and then for like turned around like 45 uh, minutes, <laughs> and then Miami was like, "Oh, wait, wait, wait! Don't sign that paper yet." Yep. Like, Come did, here. did you sign? You already signed it. Okay. Well, we'll pay it anyway. Yeah. And they matter. paid a buyout. They paid for, the buyout. So Temple has a free coach. Yeah. And so Temple, of course, gets a payday from hiring him, and then and they probably use that buyout to pay out. Uh, uh, old Rod over at uh, Northern Illinois, but let's let's jump into this offense here. Quarterback probably take Martell's job to lose. I think so. Uh, Rozier and Perry showed no development last year. Uh, they now they were probably good practice players, from yeah. what I heard. They were they were good in practice, but Akosi Perry and Malik Rozier like did nothing in games to to move along this offense. Running back DJ Dallas could be a star. They hired in Dan Enos as offensive coordinator from Alabama. He was Alabama's passing game coordinator. Uh, and what, what is it, quarterbacks coach, et cetera. So he they he should run more pro set here than he did at Alabama. Uh, at Alabama, that was Loxley's offense. Like that's he was the one that that developed that thing. 
Uh, they were the number four total defense in the country last year, number 18 scoring defense, number one in the country in havoc rate. Now, that includes a lot of different things, sack total and tackles for loss and, uh, you know, getting behind the line of scrims, all that kind of mess. Uh, five of their front seven return. Like, that's of their starting front seven, so that's always good. If this Did team, those numbers take into effect the bowl game or no? Uh, well, yes. I mean, they, they obviously take in the bowl game. But, man, they I'm, I'm not talking about rushing I know, I know that's only 13, one out of 13 games to account for. Yeah. But that was an ugly one. Well, I mean, that's probably why the scoring defense was number 18 instead of, like, number 12, right? I mean, they, they but they still only gave up 35 points. They yeah, just, but, but yardage and, and, and ru- or just rushing. Rushing yeah. defense, I thought that would have. If, if this team had been able scoring. to score even just slightly more than they did last year. They could have got blown uh, out by somebody else. Well, they, they could have been a top 10 team last year. Like, they remember, they were a top 10 team the year before, and they just could not do anything on offense whatsoever. The schedule sets up nicely, but our, the main question is, of course, what is Manny Diaz going to be like as a head coach? I really don't know if I like my prediction on this. <laughs> okay. But... uh. But I've got them at 10-2. and two. Whoa! I think they've got significantly more talent than a lot of these teams. Their home schedule is awesome. Their road schedule is awesome. Like, they are. They don't play Clemson. Like, their toughest out-of-conference game is Florida. I, I think they lose the Florida game. I think they lose at Pitt. But, you know, you, you've got at North Carolina, Bethune-Cookman, Central Michigan. you got Virginia Tech at home after a bye week. You got Virginia at home right after Virginia Tech. You got Georgia Tech at home, who we just talked about. Uh, you play at Pitt, at Florida State. You got Louisville at home. You got at uh, at FIU and at Duke to close out the season. I think talent-wise, if Tate Martell can just get the ball to these playmakers, because they got them. They, they do got have playmakers, them. and this defense is legit. I like this team. I like the defensive-minded head coaches, obviously, more than the offensive mind. And, and yes, of course, you're going to get your Lincoln Rileys that will be able to put up just ridiculous points. But if this offense can score, and I I trust Danny Nose to be able to score points. Like, he, what he was able to do... Well, they just have talent. They have but, talent. Talent's going to score well, points. Even, even still, they had talent last year and weren't able to put up points, right? But that had a lot to do with the coaching scheme. Yeah. Danny Nose at Arkansas... With Brandon Allen and Austin Allen and whoever, like he, under Brett Bielema, he was able to put up, you know, over 30 points a game in the SEC. What is he going to do against an ACC schedule like this? It, like, and none of these are ridiculous defenses, right? Now, Virginia Tech, I, maybe they lose that one, but it's at home after a bye week, right? Uh, maybe they lose to Virginia, but it's at home, you know, it, and they've got significantly more talent than Virginia. Virginia is still a work in progress. I think that this team, it like they needed a kick in the pants. And I think that Rick resigning and Manny Diaz taking the reins, Manny Diaz was what held that team together last year. And I think that this pushes them even further ahead. I think that they go 10 and 2, 7 and 1 in conference. I've got them 9 and 3. I think if you were to look at teams home away record you would find that outside of your teams that win 10, 11 games every year, that it that it doesn't it doesn't swing as much as you think it does. And then I also think that Well sometimes teams, teams are more comfortable at home and it makes it easier to lose games. Like that's yeah, that was the thing about Alabama. Down, whatever. Yeah. And then and, and then you Alabama also Alabama for years, like every game that they lost was at home. Like they, that's right. they weren't losing the road. And games. then I would also think that there are certain coaches you don't want to play, them coming off their bye week. But for the most part, I would bet teams are really close to 50-50 off their bye. Agreed. Or more closer to the to the mean than, I mean, if they're an 11-win team every year or a 10-win team every year like Alabama or your Clemson's or something like that, then, then yeah, obviously they, they win all their games. Yeah. But I think they're going to go 9-3. and three. I think all three games they could lose are all going to be home games because yeah. I think those are the best coached teams they're going to play with comparable talent. No way Virginia has the talent they have, but Virginia might be the best coach team that they're going to play against. Yes, I do agree with I, that. I love Justin Fuente. I want good things for him. Hurt my feelings last year. But I still <laughs> think he's a really good head coach. He's more proven at what he can do 
than what Manny Diaz is. Yeah. And and trust me, Virginia Tech's not lacking in dudes either. No. Okay. So, and then uh, Florida, Dan Mullins, I think all of those are home games. And I think I think you could easily lose those games. Now, there's a chance you could win all those games. Yes. And we're looking at a big time ACC championship game that we haven't yeah. had in a long time. See, well, this is the now, problem the ACC has. See, that's two years ago you had Miami as a, yep. a top five team. Yeah, but the, we all we all watched that team and, and we it, all knew yeah. they had no chance, right? Yeah. Like like their record said they were one thing, but they weren't. That yeah. schedule that year was so this schedule. Could be the same thing. Could be. I mean, like, no, if, Florida, Miami, if Florida ends up being an eight-win team or a seven-win team, I don't think they will be, but let, let's say they just something happens and all kind of wheels fall apart or whatever. They've had a rough offseason, by the way. That's not out of the realm of questions. But if that happens and Miami goes on a run here, I think, I think Manny Diaz is going to have a tougher, more physical, aggressive team than anything Mark Rick has had in a long time. I thought that that Miami team back a couple years back was fraudulent. Yeah. I think most of the national media thought they were fraudulent. Yes. Only people that didn't were people that were trying to hype the game up because they needed a record. Yes. And, and they needed they needed eyeballs to come watch this thing. Everyone felt Clemson's going to kill them. Yeah. And Clemson killed them. Yeah, they did. Now you're right. You're right. I'm with you. Uh, so I've got them ten and two. You got them nine and three. Now, we're not. We're, we're not that over far though the number, right? Yeah, over eight and a half. Yeah, yeah. Which I mean, it's it, like is that? Well, so the over is even money. Yeah. But I mean, the way the schedule sets up, it's just it is what it is. Let's move on. The North Carolina Tar Heels. Mac fighting Mac Browns. Mac Jeez. is back, baby. That's right. Two and nine last year. That's the reason Larry Fedora was let go. One and seven in the conference. Returning starters. They got four on offense, six on defense back. Experience returning, number 103 in the country. That's good for number 12 in the ACC. The over-under is five. Over is minus 125. The under juice is plus 105. So they think it's more likely they will hit six as opposed to four. We'll we'll discuss this. But uh, Mac Brown, 244. 122 and 1 in 30 years of coaching. They brought in offensive coordinator Phil Longo from Ole Miss and defensive coordinator Jay Bateman. The offensive strength is going to be at running back. You got Michael Carter and Antonio Williams. Uh, but Brown hired Longo to run the up tempo air raid. He wanted to improve the offense, do the air raid, move things fast, right? So he wanted things to go fast. But I don't know how well that works with a defensive coordinator that they brought in, right? I was just they, about to say, the, this is oil and water. Yes, they brought in defensive coordinator Jay Bateman, who likes to blitz from like a 3-4 and a 4-3 scheme. I mean, you, you got defensive end Toman Fox and linebacker uh, Dominique Ross. They will flourish in a defense like this. The issue is Bateman is used to coaching a defense that's on the field for like 20 minutes a game. I was just about to say, where the offense and runs the ball – Controls time of possession, controls the line of scrimmage, yes. playing from a short field. Yeah, you know those types of things. And it, and it, now, now we're gonna air got, it. Uh, a lot of three and outs. A lot of they are more likely to be on the field. The defense is more likely to be on the field for forty minutes when they've got Longo's offense, as opposed to the other way around. Twenty right? minutes and their typical so, offense. Uh, will he still be as aggressive? I don't know. I'm I'm super curious to see how this is going to work because like you put all these pieces together and you're like, oh well, he was great here and he was great here and like we can do all of this different stuff, but it's like, not how football works. Exactly. We've watched this for so long. It's not football yeah. works. The other thing is, is I don't know anything about the talent. Like you can go look at the recruiting rankings and, and things like this. North Carolina is not the worst team in the ACC. They're not the best team in the ACC talent wise w- w- when you're looking at places like rival stuff, but. Like I don't, I don't know how all of these pieces, coaching talent, it, are these offensive guys? Now, Larry Fedora was an offensive guy, so he should have some offensive talent here. But at the same time, he wasn't running an air raid. No, I mean he, he was running a spread. He was running a spread. It, it was, it, and it was up tempo, but not as up tempo as like what Phil Longo right. was used to. So, and like the talent on the defensive side of the ball, not to cut you off, but the no, same no, thing right. is is. 
these guys weren't attacking defenses back then. No. They were very much back on their heels playing defense, not aggressive defense. And can you just take these guys and just ask them to do something different? Going a little bit of tangent, I know we're trying to go faster, but, but Mike Lombardi always talks about how when you look in the NFL, cornerbacks go from one team to another yeah. and how they're the best corner in the league and then they go to this other team and one, they're one of the worst. And he said because there's two types of corners. There's attacking corners and there, and there are soft corners. And he said you can be the best at, at one. Nobody's great at both. But if you're a soft corner and nobody ever throws your way because you just cover the guy like a blanket, yeah. and they move you to an attacking defense, you you're get, not going to be that good. You get dusted everybody, everywhere by every receiver, not just the elite of the elite, everybody. Yeah. And defensive coordinators can't figure out, well, why can this guy not play? Because he's good at a different thing than what you're asking him to do. Yes. I think this defense, that's not... We talk about this on offense, going from a triple ops to a spread or something of that nature. Defensive players have tendencies and skill sets that they are used to doing, just like offensive players. Oh, yeah. They're about to get asked to do something they've never been asked to do before that we've seen in college. Well, the other side of this is how long are the reins that Mac Brown is going to give to Phil Longo and Jay Bateman, right? Like how he is not used to coaching – these types of defenses or offenses. Like he's just not used to coaching this type of football. And for him to bring in these guys rather than something that he is comfortable and familiar with was really strange. Like I, I think that there's talent on the roster, obviously, but is it enough to uh to circumvent the philosophies that he's trying to bring in right now? Because these two philosophies just don't I'm very mesh. curious as to how much decision making he had in all of this stuff to begin with. I'm sure that they ran stuff by him, or is this an organization that said, we would like these guys to coach with you, and Mac just wanted to be back in the game, and he's very much, we all assume, CEO-type coach. Yeah. And, and if that's the case, we need him fundraising, we need him shaking hands, kissing babies, and trying to get that emergency 20 from the you know extra extra booster to to kind of bring some money back into the program yeah. and get people excited again. and But it's, we're going to hire strange. these guys to coach, but there's no cohesiveness there. That rarely works in football. Yeah. it it's There's so much more that has to go into it. I've got this team four and eight. I've got them four and eight as well. Oh, man. I, I've got them one and seven in the conference. I kind of thought I was being generous at four and eight, too. I mean, I've I've got the win at Wake Forest to like early on. I've got a win over App State. I've got a win uh, over Mercer, and I've got a win at home against Virginia because I think the defense sometimes, uh, when bigger teams underestimate teams that are a little hungry, a little desperate, um, some of those things can swing either way. At four and eight, if this team finished two and ten, would it surprise you? Not in the slightest. Not me neither. But man. I it mean, wouldn't surprise me if they get to a bowl game either. Oh, then like that would shock the, the hell out of me. The thing is, well, I mean, the that's over where under. We're, that's where we're different. The over under is five, and Vegas like it, I, I, it's I over know, minus one twenty five. I know what Vegas is doing. I get that. So it wouldn't and I, shock and me. I've been wrong before. It would absolutely shock the hell out of me. I okay. I, can I mean, see it, it would. It it really would surprise me. I mainly because I don't believe in Mac Brown as a as a as a leader or a coach anymore. And I don't know that you can just take this guy and take this guy and just say, well, you're a good defensive coordinator. You do your job and you're a good offensive coordinator. You do your job. But at some point in time, we got to say, what is the game going to look like? Yeah. If you both succeed, it's great. But what happens when the offense is playing a good defense and you go three and out five, six, Series regular. in a row. What happens? And and you've been on the field for less and, than and a we've, minute. And we've, yeah, I was about to say, and we've killed, you know, a couple of minutes off of clock in four possessions, and the defense is just dragging. This yeah. is going to be one of those teams that, if it's bad, they're going to be like Louisville last year, not in everybody quitting or whatever, they won't cover a single spread. Yeah. The it's, games it's they possible. lose, they're going to get dusted because that defense, you're going to eventually get to be able to where you can score. And if they're blitzing, all the time, and they're really attacking, that's when big plays happen. If yeah. you miss, it kills you. Yeah. You're Alabama, you can do that. You're Clemson, LSU, big defense at Auburn, Georgia, great defensive program. But they, they will get blasted Michigan, by, Michigan State. by some of these teams that's that right. can put up points. 
you you miss on those big blitzes and you get aggressive defensively, you're talking about to the house. Yeah. No, you're right. All right, we got three teams left. We've already Sorry. hit our 30-minute mark. So we don't worry about going over. It's all good. We're just rocking and rolling. I'm bad at this. Pitt Panthers. Pittsburgh, seven and seven last year, six and two. They were your ACC Coastal Champions. I know. It's kind of surprising. It surprises me so yeah. much. Returning starters, they've got five on offense, five on defense back. Experience returning number 79 in the country. That is good for ninth in the ACC. Their over-under is five and a half. The over-juice is minus 150, so they expect them to go uh, six wins. The under is plus 130. Pat Narduzzi, 28 and 24 in four years. He is replacing two 1,000-yard rushers four offensive linemen, and 12 starters overall. Former US, uh, UMass uh, head coach Mark Whipple is the new offensive coordinator. That could be a good thing, I guess, because uh, they were so heavily uh, reliant on the run last year. Uh, but they, they've got quarterback Kenny Pickett back, wide receiver uh, Maurice French. Uh, got those two guys to work with. Obviously, that is a foundation to build on. The final six games of last year, their opponents averaged only 323 yards per game. That was strong. Yeah. Lots strong. of upperclassmen starting, but they are young and experienced uh, behind them. Not much for Whipple to work with, but the team is built physical. Defense is obviously going to help some. I, they, they really surprised me the back half of last year, but a lot of that was those offensive linemen. And the running backs. Controlling right? cold, controlling line of scrimmage, controlling the game clock, defensive staying off the field, so when they're on the field, they, they were can really, be aggressive really good. and they can they can make big stands. I agree. The I don't schedule, think they can do that. The this schedule year. this year is brutal. They're non conference games. They got three against three real good teams. Yeah. Uh, they they've got uh, and, Ohio, and no, 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 just at that. Penn State and UC. Ohio. Ohio, not gonna be a pushover. No, no, not in the slightest. I no. do have them beating Ohio. I do too, but um I've got them beating Delaware. I've got them beating Miami at Georgia Tech. And then I've got them beating North Carolina. I think they lose at Virginia Tech, lose to Boston College, uh, lose at Syracuse, lose at Duke, lose to UCF, lose to Penn State, and lose the opening game to Virginia. I've got them at five and seven. I've got them three and nine. And, Holy and I, mackerel. And, and, and I think Narduzzi's better than that. Well, you, you but that's it. I, I just don't, I don't think they're beating Miami. If we think Miami is what they are, you're, you're seeing that's a home game and we're going to upset somebody. Yeah. But if they upset somebody and they go four and, and, and eight, it wouldn't surprise me. I think they would do it early against Virginia or or maybe there is a chance. We covered this in the Big Ten uh, preview earlier, which was it wouldn't shock me if Penn State has kind of a collapse and they, they win yeah. that game. That's on the road, but that's also a game I don't think Penn – that's not going to be a night game at Penn State, I don't yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. So that wouldn't, that wouldn't surprise me either. If they beat BC, I have them losing to BC. If they beat BC, that wouldn't shock me. It's a home game at the end of the season. I just don't see them getting to six wins. I can't believe this team was the team that represented the, the division. Coastal Division last year. Um, and and I, I think their schedule this year is just – I don't know what it looked like last year. I know this. It ain't the same. They got four non-conference games that are going to make them fight like hell. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And, and they did that last year, right? They, they, well, not not to this extent. No, not to they, this they extent. Played, they played Penn State last year. But, you know, it, it, Pitt always does this. Uh, and, and they may shock us again, but Narduzzi has got to find a way to stabilize this team. He's a good coach. Yeah. At some point in time, he's got to find a way to recruit. I don't see him... Um, I mean, remember with Matt Canada, they upset number one Clemson on the road in year one. They went eight and four. Right. They were like, they looked like the trending team. That's what got Canada on the map. And then the next year, like after Canada leaves, they just they bottom out. That's right. Now, but but even that, even bottoming out, even not making a oh, bowl yeah, game, they beat two. number number two or say. three Miami. That's right. Yeah, like, but like I said, we that was the year that we kind of didn't know what we thought about Miami. Yeah. That's and I mean, Miami had won what, like they beat Notre Dame, who was a top five team, top right. ten team, or whatever, and blasted them in the Orange Bowl like two weeks before that. So, you know, you just you never know what to make of these teams. Sometimes they're all paper tigers, and it is what it is. Yeah, I could be I could be way off on this. That's, I've got them five and seven because they're they're going to beat somebody. You're right, and 
like Narduzzi does that. This I, team I is probably, really physical. I probably could just, yeah, just give them an extra win because I think they're going to pull an upset off somewhere. Yeah. Next up, the Virginia Cavaliers, 8-5 and five last year, 4-4 four and four in the conference. Returning starters, they got 6 on offense, 7 on defense. Experience returning, number 56 in the country, number 5 in the conference. They're over-under. The juice is the same on both sides. Sure. Minus 110. The over-under is 7.5 regular season wins. Head coach Bronco Mendenhall, 16-22 and 22 in three years at the helm, has taken Virginia to back-to-back bowls. Uh, that's the first time since 2004-2005 for this team. I like Bronco so much. Oh, yeah. Quarterback Bryce Perkins returns, and wide receiver Joe Reed could absolutely break out. The offense needs the young offensive line to step up. They had the number 20 total defense in 2018. They are loaded at all three areas on defense. Uh, the defense is going to be lights out again this year. That's what Bronco Mendenhall does. Sure. Um, with Miami, Georgia Tech, and North Carolina debuting new coaches, this is the year for them to win the division, which sounds kind of crazy considering Broncos only been there for three years. But, like, it's it's funny to look back. Everybody thought, oh, man, Virginia Tech nailed the Justin Fuente hire. Virginia, Bronco Mendenhall, how is that going to work? He's coming in. Like, what is what are they going to do? That's like, right. How is he going to transition from BYU to this? And truth is, good coaching, it don't matter where you put them, they're going to understand how to build a team from the ground up. Correct. He has laid the perfect foundation here. Bryce Perkins at quarterback, he is just a, a difference maker. Not so much in like playmaking ability, et cetera, which he's, he's good, but that entire team Decision is making. different with him on the field. That's right. So with him being back senior season, I, like I love – this team this year, the schedule kind of difficult, but that's okay. I think they win a lot of games. I think they go nine and three. They finally get the Virginia Tech monkey off their back. I think they are six and two in the conference. I don't think they win the division though. I've got Miami. In got Miami win that. Yeah, Could. but it, it wouldn't surprise me if they were to go and win at Miami and they go ten and two. And Miami. they win the division. And they win the division. That would that would change so, it. That would change it. I've got them nine and three too. I've got Miami nine and three. I've got them nine and three. And um Virginia Tech. And Virginia Tech nine and three. There I mean, I know we haven't got to Virginia Tech yet, but I, I I don't know that they get the Virginia Tech monkey off their back yet. Maybe they do. I know it's at home, but I don't know that that matters. I think I think there are gonna be just as many Votek fans there as, as Virginia fans. You think Virginia's got a chance to beat Notre Dame? I mean, it's on the road. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, no, yeah. So, hang on. Remember what we talk about with Notre Dame fans at home, okay? Every ticket that is sold on the aftermarket when is, is a big program team. is because this is your one chance to go to Notre Dame. Yeah. And so every Virginia fan for, for their entire life is going to finally get a chance. They're spending whatever they got to spend. To go to Notre Dame. And they're going to go to Notre Dame. We saw this with Georgia. Now, Georgia's a substantially better team and better program than Virginia, but it doesn't matter. It does not matter. This is the one opportunity that Virginia is going to have to go there in a long, long, long time. I think that place will be almost halfway Virginia fans. I don't know about halfway, but no, there will be a lot. Sub- They're yeah. going to be enough to where you don't have a substantial – Crowd advantage. Yeah, there's now no you got to sleep advantage. on your own home in, in your own bed, and and you get to go to the restaurants that you know and you like, and your your routine it's a little different, but the crowd behind you and maybe getting calls because of that not happening. Yeah, just just not going to be so over overwhelmed with Notre Dame fans because that's just another game for them. Yeah, now you're you're right. You're right. Let's finish up. Come on. The Virginia Tech Hokies, six and seven last year, first losing season in years. Uh, just I didn't, a I didn't even bad write it down. loss to Old Dominion. Yeah, uh, four and four in conference though. They returned five starters on offense, eleven on defense. They got a lot back on defense. Um, that doesn't mean that they're all going to start this year, but you know they they got a lot of them back. Uh, number forty two in the country and experience returning number three in the conference. Their over under is eight. The over juice is minus one fifteen. The under is minus one oh five. Justin ba- ba- basically even. Basically even. Yeah. Justin Fuente, twenty five and fifteen in three years. Went from nineteen wins in the first two years to just six last year, so that's not good. You would hope that you would continue growing. Quarterback Josh Jackson transferred to Maryland, but senior Ryan Willis is back and he's got receiving threats galore. 
on this. Defensive coordinator Bud Foster announced he is retiring after this season. He had nine freshmen or sophomores starting in the Military Bowl. They will be much more experienced this year, and they will be better for all of that experience from last year. Uh, four years in, and they've got no real offensive superstars. That's a little uh, concerning, all right? Uh, they're thin at quarterback and running back. They've got a lot of transfers. What, like, I want to know what's going on with this program, with all the people transferring out, with the, there's just a lot going on here, and it's strange, right? It's so weird. It, it is like, strange. Like, you expected things to be a lot more stable. Like, is Bud Foster being forced out, or... Like because they, of course you've heard the rumors that he and Fuente don't get along all that well. Whatever, uh, it was strange anyway that he stuck around after Beamer left. But he wanted what, to keep coaching. I think that's okay. Well, yeah, but uh, he he could have had a number of other jobs. But yeah, but that's when it's home forever. I yeah, mean, that's just different. I mean, they, packing up and moving somewhere else at that age when you've done all those things. Yeah. And he's the kind of guy that I recruited these kids. I think he's he's leaving on his own. I think he wanted to retire, but I think. I do think that Bud Foster's the kind of man, Frank Beamer's this kind of guy too, which is why I think it was so hard for him to eventually retire and hang it up. But he's leaving now. All the kids that he recruited and he brought in under him and Frank, this is their senior year. This is it. He's going out with those seniors. I think that's a little bit of a special thing. I want it so bad to get them to 10 wins. I want it so bad. I, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. But yeah. I, I wanted that because I think – Defensively, they could find something special. I, I think. I think these. I think their players are going to play. And okay, so they're going to be inexperienced be quarterback. But that doesn't scare me with Justin. Coach Fuente can coach quarterback. He can coach offense. He's going to yeah. figure this thing out. They're going to well, put Ryan, up points. Ryan Willis played uh, in every game after the Old Dominion game last year. Yeah. Like it's. Yeah. They were able to put up some points. Nothing. Nothing about. Nothing about the quarterback position scares me at all with, with Fuente at the helm. It's just one of those things where I just trust him. They're going to be fine. Um, they might not get along, but they're going. if things start rolling their way. I think, I think the majority of the drama is probably behind them. I think so. I think that's, that's the good thing, right? I'll tell you this. If they go undefeated all the way up until, and this is not, I mean, this is, this is tough, beating Boston College at Boston College open season, getting through Duke. If they get to Miami, and they can win that Miami game. I think you're going to see um, a little, a little more cohesion. You're, now they're on the map. Now yeah, everybody's, it, nobody's it, looking at them. The four games before that, like at well, Boston yeah. College. Oh, they definitely Old made sure we're not losing a non-conference game. Yeah. We're, we're do- you, you want a safe bet? Old Dominion. I don't know what the spread is. Just, just buy tech. Buy yeah. tech by a million. They're not losing that game again. No, you're right. I. I I think there's something special. I've got them nine and three. I think Bud Foster is not going to quit on this team. You see what that record says? Nine and three. Nine and three. I, I want. It, I want it ten. Thing. I want it ten and two. If they win at Miami, uh, all bets are off at that point. I think. I think they have. They, and if they're undefeated going to Miami, do you have them beating Boston College? Yeah, I got them. I got them beating Boston College. So what what three them, losses you got? I've got, you got the Virginia uh, game. That's I've got at Miami, okay. I've got at Notre Dame, and I've got at Virginia. Okay. So, so I so I, I haven't beaten Virginia because I just don't think Bud Foster is going to lose his last game. I just think that defense is going to be special. It's it's on the road. Virginia hasn't beaten them in forever. And I'm going against my, my normal thing, which is if you haven't beaten them in forever, you got to show me first before I can pick you. But in this nah, case... Man, that's, that's stuff I never care about because this team is so much different than... Every year the teams just are... Are so much are different. different. None, yeah. of that, none of that other crap matters. No, I'm, I'm with you. Well, it's a, like Florida last year. I didn't think Florida State was going to be as bad as they were, and I picked Florida State before the season, thinking that, okay, by the end of the season, Willie Tiger's going to have it turned around. They're playing until, you know, all that kind of mess. Right. So, either way, Virginia Tech, we both got them 9-3. and three. Yeah, who you got coming out of this conference? I've got... Uh, you got Miami. I've got Miami out of this division. So, but I've got it, all three it, of those. It wouldn't surprise me if Virginia or Virginia Tech were to come out. I've got all three of those at 9-3, and three, but I have Miami beating both of Virginia and Virginia Tech. I think if one of those two teams pulls off the... Of course, if Virginia beats them and then loses to Vod Tech, we've got this weird... It's a weird three, match. And, and the other wins are non-conference wins or losses. You know? Well, Notre Dame plays... 
Both a lot of them. Yeah. So, is what it is. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think I think Miami right now. Ask me after the Florida game. I've got Florida winning, but I mean, we'll see. So it's I, I don't feel super confident about any of this because they are all just put them in a bag, shake them up, whoever pops out, right? Well, yeah, we've got a lot of question marks. So you've that got to watch this team seen before we can. Now you yeah. you've got that right. All right, that's going to wrap up today's show. This is Winning Cures Everything. Go over to winningcureseverything.com to find out more information about us. Hit subscribe on YouTube. Leave us some comments. Tell us what we got wrong, what we got right. We appreciate all of it. You can trash talk if you want to. We're going to bring it right back, so hopefully you don't get offended. Um, <laughs> leave us a nice review on Apple Podcasts. Share out the show. Uh, go to tunicatravel.com. We will see you guys again next time. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. Good. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.